Greetings, Saints. Welcome to Chaplain Peter One on YouTube, brought to you by Eternal Values Ministries.com. Now, I want to continue with our study in um, uh, laying out the foundations, the most basic, fundamental foundations uh, of the uh, Word of God concerning um, our lives as a church, as a family, as people, as men and women and, and children, society in general. And we left off in Genesis 3, and I want to start again in uh, verse 17. Genesis 3, 17. If you have a Bible, why don't you go with me there? And it starts out here, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it, cursed is the ground for thy sake. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow thou shalt eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth weeds and things that are not fruitful. Bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face thou shalt eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for, the, for out of it thou was taken, and for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. Let's read that again. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. So here, we touched on a little bit last time, I want to uh, look at it some more. Um, we know the story, most of us do, even if you don't know the Bible hardly. You've heard about uh, uh, the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil, and the tree of life, and the story of uh, Adam and Eve, which is a real, true story recorded in the Bible for us in the beginning here. And um, God told um, Adam, before Eve was even created, eat of all the trees you want, but this tree here, don't touch it. The day you eat from this tree, no, he didn't say don't touch it. He said don't eat from it. And he said, uh, the day you eat from this tree, you will die. And it was Adam's responsibility to uh, convey this instruction to his wife, because she was made later on. There's no recording, no scripture of God going to the woman and telling her this. He left this up to the headship of the man. And he told his wife, uh, Eve, and uh, Eve was um, beguiled, fooled, tricked, conned, whatever you want to call it, uh, by the devil. Lucifer entering the serpent and deceived Eve and she ate from it and Adam was there with her. He eats from it and all of a sudden sin enters the human race through Adam. And now they're hiding from God, they're running from God, they're trying to cover themselves up with fig leaves. And so the Lord passes a judgment on every one of them. And what we just read was about Adam. Because you listened to your wife. And you did eat of the tree God said not to eat from. 
Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Do you hear that? This world is cursed for our sake. He's talking to Adam. Adam represents the human race. This is uh, real important to uh, understand here. That this curse is in the world. I mean, the wages of sin is death. Um, everyone that sins die. The soul that sinned, it shall die. And we're not just talking about physical death. Because uh, for sure sin will give you physical death also. But uh, we're talking about the second death, uh, hell fire, the lake of fire for all eternity without God. So, um, Adam listens to his wife. He eats from the tree. Your eyes are opened and judgments are passed. And the one with Adam is that um, the ground's cursed for your sake. This is all humanity. This applies to all of us. And in sorrow shall you eat of it all the days of your life. In other words, um, things won't grow real easy no more out of the ground. And you just got to work a little bit on it. Now you're going to have to really plow it. Now you're going to have to work hard. And you're going to get thorns and weeds and thistles and things that you can't eat. Things that are not uh, productive. And you're going to sweat and labor until it's time for you to die. For God says, I took you out of the ground, made you out of dust. You're going to return to dust again. So in the sweat of your face, verse 19, you're going to eat bread till you return unto the ground. For out of it thou was taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. So we need to understand that um, there are certain ground rules here, fundamental, fundamental basic principles that God gives us. Um, Adam is the head of Eve. Generally speaking, man comes before the woman as the man and woman come before the children. And above man is Christ. And above Christ is God the Father. Amen? And so we see, we see like a, a chain of command here about who is in authority, who is responsible for things. So we have God the Father, we have Christ, we have the man, we have the woman, and we have the children. The uh, woman is not inferior to the man any more than the Lord Jesus Christ is inferior to the father. The children are not inferior to their parents, to their mother and father. They're just children. So they have to be under the supervision of the uh, parents for their own good. And so it is for um, the wife. She is to be under the supervision of the husband. He's the head. Now, I looked up the word here, women, and, and so forth. Uh, it could be a virgin. It could be a married woman. Or it could be just a woman. So generally speaking, man is the head of the woman. The husband is the head of the wife. And then come the children. Nobody's inferior to nobody. See, that's our problem. Because somebody is over us, we think automatically we are inferior. But with God, it's not a matter of inferiority, but, but rather it is for our good that God has done this. Because the husband and wife work as a team, of course, in the family. They work together. 
Now, let me let me give you some uh, some uh, scriptures on this. Uh, man, the husband, is ultimately responsible for his wife and his children. You know, as um as a as a husband, um, my wife speaks with me, we uh, make decisions together, but if there's a disagreement, um, I'm the one as the man, the head, to make the final decision. And I'm the one responsible before a holy God uh, for, for, for the decision I made for my family. Not my wife, not my kids, I am. Because God has given them to me, the man the husband. And I'll tell you, nature even shows that, doesn't it? Nature declares the glory of God. Why don't we look at, um, in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 11 and verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. Now here, the Apostle Paul starts to lay out uh, teachings to the Corinthian church. He talks about uh, a lot of things here. He talks about the Lord's Supper. And then he comes um, to uh, chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1. He says, be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered them as I delivered them unto you. So here, here is the ordinances, here's the commands as I delivered them unto you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. The head, the headship. The head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God, as God the Father. And then he goes through some things about praying and having your head covered and uncovered. And then in verse 7 he says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head for as much as he is the image and the glory of God but the woman is the glory of the man. Do you hear that saints? For as much as he, the man, is the image and the glory of God but the woman is the glory of man. Verse 8. For the man is not for the woman but the woman for the man. Remember Adam was by himself and he named all the animals and he saw all the animals had a, a, a companion, male and female, and then God made Adam a companion, a female, a woman, his wife. And, he, and the Lord said to him, be fruitful and multiply, produce godly children, godly children unto the Lord. So the woman, for the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. The woman was created for Adam. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. And he goes on again about the head covering. And then in verse 12, for as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman. But all things of God. So um, here is a clear scriptural uh, teaching that man is the head and man, when God created that, he is the glory of God. That's what man is. 
and the woman is for the man. It says that um, for as much as he is the image of the, the glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. So this is how God has set it up. You want to fight with this? You want to argue with this? I leave that up to you. I have to uh, teach what I see. And, and let, let me say this, that um, cultural differences, uh, modernism, you know, 2017, this is, uh, you know, what, uh, 5,000, 6,000 6, years old or more. Uh, you know, things have changed. Truth never changes. This is the problem. Um, we've gone off the foundation, the foundational truths of the scripture. And I'm talking to the church, not just to... Uh, uh, not just to uh, people in general, this is for everybody, but I'm speaking to the church. So, um, these are the doctrinal foundations, and when you go off from this foundation, strange things start to happen. The word strange, look it up in the dictionary, queer. Queer things start to happen. Alright? Now, um, the order God gives, again, is for our good. For our good. Now, let's, let's look at uh, some more scripture here. In, um, let's go to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Women, women preachers love this, this verse. Maybe I'll give you a little testimony of what happened to me one day. As I got married and I moved to Florida, around the West Palm Beach area, me and my wife were looking for a church, so we went to this church. I won't mention the names to protect the guilty. But um, as we went into this church, there was the, the man, the pastor, and his wife, also the pastor. But uh, the man... He just was on the side quietly, and the woman was doing the preaching, the wife. Okay. Um, a lot of young people in the church. And uh, a young, well, not a young, but uh, this lady, this uh, prophetess, uh, she came to the church. Now, I believe in women prophetesses, because the Bible teaches it. I don't believe in women pastors, because the Bible says no. I don't believe in women apostles. I didn't see one woman being an apostle picked by the Lord or, or anywhere else. I see deaconesses in Philippians, but um, I don't see uh, women apostles or pastors. Uh, evangelists, yeah, together with her husband, uh, uh, with their husbands, that that that's fine. Or women witnessing to other women, or even even you know a woman witnessing to a man, but you got you got to be careful. So, um, in 1 Timothy chapter 2, he says here, in verse 9, he says, In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, they dress modestly, with shamefacedness and sobriety, sobriety uh, being sober. That doesn't mean you were a drunk and now stay, stop drinking. <laughs> it means sound mind, sober thinking. Okay? Uh, this, this old word here, old King James word, shamefacedness, is the ability to be able to blush, to be embarrassed. That the woman dressed mod modest apparel, modest clothing, with shame Faceness. Uh, if the Apostle Paul was around today and he saw the way some of our women dress, even in church, um, he would be ashamed, he'd be embarrassed, he'd probably turn red. And this is telling us 
this is how we have to be. You're not going to a nightclub, ladies. You're not, you're not, you're not going to get picked up somewhere, I hope, when you go to church. And, and the men, the husbands and the fathers who have daughters, need to enforce this. Because the young ladies, they want to they wanna go do what they want. Anyway, when I was um, looking for that, in that church and that prophetess came, and she called me up to the front. Okay, I went up. And she starts prophesying to me. And all of a sudden she just stops dead and looks at me. And then she says, you don't believe in women prophets or women pastors. I forget which one. <laughs> but um, I just stood there quiet. I was kind of stunned. And I didn't even say nothing. She says, well, at least you're honest. Okay. You're reading my mind, huh? And uh, afterwards, when I went, after she prophesied some more, I went and I sat down. The woman pastor got up. Whoa! Did she let me have it? Remember, I just came to visit the church, me and my wife, for the first time. We didn't say a word to nobody. This prophetess calls me up. You don't believe in women pastors or, or, or prophet? I didn't say a word. Oh, you're honest. I sit down, now the pastor, the woman pastor gets up. And she says, Ah, these Pharisees, these legalists, they like to hang. First Timothy chapter 2, verse 12, over our heads, over the women's heads who preach. And let me read to you what it says. Um, but I suffer not a woman to teach nor to usurp authority over the man. Let's read it again. I suffer not, that means I allow not, a woman to teach, nor to, nor to usurp authority over the man. But to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. I was just making sure the recorder is on. It's on. All right. Now, in verse 11 before verse 12, let the woman learn in all silence with all subjection. Okay, she's under the authority of the man because the man's the head. Just like the man uh, is under the authority of Christ and Christ is under the authority of the father and the children are under the authority of both the man and the woman, the parents. Simple, right? It's so simple, it, it, uh, it's amazing how people have, gone, have, have just completely destroyed this foundation, and even in the church. So, why is a woman not to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence, to be quiet? And it goes on to say, for Adam was first formed, created, then Eve. So creation, Adam, man, is the head. He's the head. He's the glory of God. Head of woman and the glory of God. So he's first created. The next thing. And Adam was not deceived. Adam wasn't fooled. But the woman being deceived was into transgression. You see, when Adam ate, when Eve gave it to Adam, the fruit to eat from that tree they weren't supposed to eat from, Adam knew he was doing wrong. It is sin to him that knows it is sin. Amen? And so Adam wasn't deceived. But the woman, being deceived, she was fooled. She was tricked. 
she was completely deceived here. The woman being deceived was in the transgression, in the sin, the breaking of that one law they had. And so this is why um, the woman is not to teach and have authority over the man. There's no women pastors, I'm sorry. Um, it makes no difference how good they preach. It makes no difference how holy or godly they are. They're not to be in authority over the man. And if you got problems with this, take it up with the Lord. I'm just reading to you the scripture and reading it in context here to what it says and what it means, comparing it with other scriptures so we get this foundational truth. And when we go off this truth from this foundation, this is where homosexuality first starts. And I don't mean men with men and women with women having sex. I mean when you get a strong woman that's supposed to be under the authority of man, but she becomes the authority and the man takes the place of the woman and he's, he's in silence as if he was created second place after, you know, after Eve. Adam was created after Eve as if, as if Eve was the glory of God and man is the glory of woman. It's the opposite. It's not like that, is it? But this is what is happening and this is an assault of the enemy. This is, look what's going on today in 2017. This is, what I'm teaching you right now, this is considered hate speech. I mean, terrible, terrible, I'm such a hater. Such awful, awful hate speech I'm teaching you. Oh my goodness. Wake up, church. Now, so the woman is not to teach or to usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. Because she was deceived, and she was in the sin, breaking the law. Adam, he broke the law. He knew better, though. He knew what was going on. This is important. Adam knew it. Now, in verse 15, in the Old English, when it says, Notwithstanding, she, uh, she Eve, or, or woman, shall be saved in childbearing. It's not talking about salvation through the blood of Christ for your eternal salvation. It, it's talking about that she takes her place as the woman, she has children, and together if they continue in faith and charity, love, and holiness with sobriety. So she, she shall be saved in childbearing. It's not talking about getting saved whether you're going, whether you're going to heaven or hell, okay? It's talking about she's saved um, through her role as a woman. That's what it's talking about. It's not talking about heaven or hell here if you have children or if you don't have children. Some women can't have children even. Or the husband cannot have children with the wife. This doesn't mean she's going to hell or he's going to no. It's talking about that when we work out our role, like the scripture says in Philippians 2, 12 and 13, work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for, you know, it's the will of God and so forth. What we do here in this life, it's not talking about ultimately whether, you, you know, the blood of Christ, where your sins are forgiven, whether you end up in heaven or hell. So, there's a more scripture to this. We can look at... Um, well, here's, here's another one you're going to like. <laughs> uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 14. Let's look at that one. 1 Corinthians 14. Now, the Apostle Paul, he goes out and lays out the teaching of the gifts of the Spirit, uh, tongues, and uh, interpretation, and and other gifts and so forth. And he says in verse 33, 1 Corinthians 14, 33, For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, 
as in all the churches of the saints. Now he says, verse 34, let your women keep silence in the churches. Uh-oh. For it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law, the laws of Moses. See, there's some things that never change. These are truths that go from Genesis to Revelation. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. Wow. Now listen to what else he says. What? Came the word of God out from you, from you Corinthians only? Came it only unto you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, operating in the gifts of the Spirit and so forth, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. That's what Paul says. This is the context in which the woman is to be silenced. It's also talking about the gifts of the Spirit, but the woman is to be silent. Um, I had a friend once that was very strict in this, a pastor, minister, and I asked him, well, can a woman give a testimony in church? Can she get up to the front uh, of the church and sing a song? And he had to think about it for a while, and um, he said, yeah, she can give a testimony or, um, you know, sing a song. But it says to be silent, not, not to say anything in church. You got anything you want to know? Ask your husband at home. Now I believe it means what it says. Now let me say this. Um, I have no problem with a woman singing in the church or a woman giving a testimony. I think what we're getting to with this is what we read in 1 Timothy chapter 2. Is she taking authority over the man? Is she in charge instead of the man? This is where this is where this is coming to. As long as a woman is obedient under the headship of the husband as all of us have to be under the headship of Christ and God um, then in that in, in that atmosphere in that way yeah she can uh, she can open her mouth in church she can say she can uh, mumble a few syllables or say a couple adjectives or you know, speak, of course, but again, she's not to take authority. Now here, in the first uh, century when this is written, uh, the women were probably completely silent. See, we've come a long way, haven't we? We, uh, in our, in our intelligence. See, we're more intelligent now than they were back then. Um, we don't believe this. So, my um, advice to you would be that um, about this foundational truth in the church is yeah, don't, let, don't let the women, don't let the wives take over. The church or the family and uh, even though it says they can't speak in the church due to be quiet, and I believe that's what it really means, as long as they're under the authority of the husband and the pastor, um, they can say something. But that's it, man. That is it. Be careful because many of you must must have seen families where 
the man is quiet instead of the woman. The woman is doing the work of the ministry. She's uh, doing the praying in the house. She's leading a uh, Bible study. You know, uh, women become pastors and uh, they're, they're usurping their authority over the men. That's a form of homosexuality. That's how it starts. That's how this feminism starts. And, and then homosexuality and, uh, you know, wherever we are now, uh, transhumanism even and everything else and, and bestiality and pedophilia and all kinds of garbage. This is where it went to, people. And we need to come back to the uh, teachings of the scripture where it was laid out in the first century here. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. The new virgins imitate me as I imitate Christ. We need to come back to this and practice this. Because outside of this, you got confusion. God says he's not the author of confusion. Let's uh, look at some more um, scripture here in 1 Peter chapter 3. You got First and Second Peter here in the back of the book. First Peter chapter 3. And let's just read about some of um, the relationships between the husbands and the wives and um, how the wife is to be and how the husband is to be. First Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection. Subjection, submissive to your own husbands, your own husbands. That if any obey, that if any obey of any husband, obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of their wives. That word conversation is lifestyle behavior. Okay, so. I've seen where um, I was in a church for, for quite a while, the first church I ever went to, and there were three women who were married, who were believers, married to husbands that didn't know the Lord. First of all, it's a big mistake to go against God's um, commandments when God says you're only to marry a believer in the faith, 1 Corinthians chapter 7. But, oh, but I love him. He loves me. I'll bring him to Christ. Well, 1 Corinthians 7, it says, uh, how do you know, a woman, you're going to bring your husband to Christ? Or how do you know, oh man, you're going to bring your wife to Christ? How do you know this? You're going to save yourself a lot of pain and trouble if you just obey the scriptures in the first place. But unfortunately, we make mistakes, right? So these three women, they married men, and they, I don't, maybe, I really don't know if they married them before they were saved, and then they got saved, their husbands didn't get saved. But either way, they were married to these men who didn't care for the Lord. And even at some fellowships where Christians would come, these women brought their husbands, and I could hear these men I mean, they couldn't care for the things of God at all. Well, here's what happened. Um, they got divorced, all three of these women, and they took off by themselves to another state. I think they went to Arizona or someplace. And, um, you know, they, they were together in this, and they, uh, the husbands didn't want them, divorced them, and, and uh, they left. So, um, what this is saying here, likewise, ye wives, be in subjection, in obedience and submission to your husbands, your own husbands, that if they don't obey, they may be, they may without the word, they also may be, may without the word be won by the conversation, the uh, behavior of your wives. In other words, if you're in that situation, you cannot beat them over the head with the Bible because that'll people run from that. It's 
especially family members. But you're quiet, you're submissive, you're obedient, and you obey the Lord, and they will see this. And then whether they get saved or not, you know, it's, they have to they have to come to Christ. People have a free will, so um, there's no guarantee they're going to be saved, but they got a good chance of being saved by you living, you women who have husbands like this, living a godly lifestyle. Verse 2, while they behold, these godless husbands, while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear. Your chaste, your um, conversation, lifestyle, coupled together with the fear of God. Who's adorning, adorning the way you dress and everything, the way you look, the things you put on. Who's adorning, let it not, let it not be the outward adorning of plating of the hair or of wearing of gold or of putting on a pair of clothing but let it be the hidden man of the heart that's Christ Christ in us let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit which in the sight of God is a great price so God's telling us, you, you ladies, you wives that are saved, you women that are saved, uh, this, you know, you, this isn't about, this life isn't about you getting all decked out, looking good, the latest styles, all kinds of makeup, you know, late, uh, recently, uh, you know, these last 20 years or so, everybody's pierced up and tattooed up, I mean, tattooed all over the place, pierced up everywhere. And so that's what he's saying here. Don't be going for that, but rather uh, let it be the hidden man of the heart. You know, when we can say the Holy Spirit comes to dwell in us, that's what that's Christ in us. In him dwelleth the fullness of the Godhead bodily. God lives in you. So this is what is a great price. This is a great treasure. You are a treasure to the Lord when you submit to your husband, when you obey to him. Now, of course, if he's telling you, go sleep with my friend, you don't do that, okay? That's not a godly man. I mean, you know, you don't do those kind of things. Uh, if he tries to, uh, you know, make you steal or lie or, or what, you don't do these things. But other than that, you're submissive, you're obedient not to him. And you're quiet. You don't harass and blab <laughs> and drive them out of the, and drive them nuts out of the house, okay? So let it be the hidden man of the heart in that which is not corruptible. It, it cannot decay, in other words. Even the or ornament of a meek, a humble humble, a meek, and quiet spirit. Man, what? nothing worse than a, a loud-mouthed woman, I'm telling you, especially if you're married to one. The ornament of a meek and a quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God a great price. These are the treasures which you have in heaven where moth and thief cannot come in and, you know, to steal them, or they're not going to rust like they do here on the earth. But they're in heaven laid up for you, your rewards, your treasures. This is what it's speaking of. And so, in verse uh, 5, But after this manner, here's your example, ladies. In old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. So they adorned themselves, they dress nice, uh, being in subjection to their own husbands, even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord. Not capital L-O-R-D, but small l-O-R-D. Calling him Lord. In Spanish, uh, the same word is used for Lord Jesus, Señor Jesus, as it is for calling a man, Señor. 
So calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as you do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, you husbands, dwell with them, with the wives, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together to inherit, heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. So, the husbands are admonished here by the Lord, dwell with them according to knowledge. I got a translation here, with intelligence. <laughs> Opposite of stupidity, huh? intelligence? All right, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife. Men, we, we need to honor our wives. Amen? Not dishonor them, not treat them like dirt. Uh, I, I used to like to watch the honeymooners with Jackie Gleason. I'm the king of my castle. One of these days, Alice Powell to the moon. It was funny. It was comedy. But when this, when this is happening in reality in your house, uh, this is not of God. So, um, likewise, your husbands dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife, respect, honor, you know, what kind of love can we have for one another if we don't have honor and respect? As unto the weaker vessel. Oh, the feminists! The weaker vessel. Well, you know, um, you ladies that want to be like men, I'm speaking of lesbians, and you're going to shoot hormones when you start growing a beard, and you, and you look like a man, and you start talking like a man, and acting uh, like a man, I got news for you. You're not a man. You're something that's been uh, marred. Something that's been um, wiped up, man. It's been destroyed. You're destroying who you are before your creator. So, yes, a woman is the weaker vessel. You know, now it's very popular to send the women into the military and they want to put them on the front lines. This is, this is Satan, man. This is the enemy. Put them on the front lines. Make them, uh, you know, Navy SEALs. Um, all kinds of uh, special operations. Put them out there. One problem. They can't compete with the men. That's the problem. They cannot compete with the men. They're not men. And so when it says the weaker vessel, we are to honor, respect, protect our wives, help our wives. We got to remember. I mean, um, you know, when I when I go out uh, painting painting a house and I got to climb up there, way up there on the roof to paint some windows or get a peak of a house. I, I can take my son with me. He's a man. He's a young man. I don't take my wife with me to get up there and do that kind of work. She's the weaker vessel. It's got nothing to do with any uh, inferiority. It's just a fact of creation. And this is the problem. We don't like 